Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osric501, and today I want to go over some more Atlas patch notes. And these are easily some of the worst balance changes I think I've seen in Ark or Atlas, and probably a lot of other games too. Um, there was a decent sized patch that just kind of came out of nowhere. There was a bunch of balancing stuff, and pretty much most of it is terrible. Um, and most people think this way because if you go look on Reddit or the Twitter comments of any of the devs or the official Atlas page, all of it is on these changes, which are horrible. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, we're going to start down here. Um, so this change was already changed. It was discovery zones now count as three discovery points instead of one. Um, but they changed that back up here. So discovery points now provide one point per unlock. I don't know why they change it down here. I mean, I know they added the value. So unofficial servers could chain, put it however much they want. But I don't know why they change it, then unchange it so quickly. As this is probably a change that people might like. Because they basically made it. So um, players no, no longer need to discover all zones to reach max level. So I don't know... Maybe they they said it wasn't a retroactive change, so I don't know if they just weren't able to do it correctly now. But kind of weird. They updated some language stuff. Um, Battlewise been updated to now support Windows Insider builds, resolve dev kit crashes. Um, but we're just gonna start up here for the big one. So server optimization increased performance by five percent. Good optimization transition data cleanup in Redis to avoid database bloat don't exactly know what this is for but probably just some backend stuff server listing for non-atlas servers have been rewritten and will now list non-atlas servers immediately so all fine stuff found in youth only usable if you're over the age of 90 good there's not a reason to do it before then found of youth is now available on two random golden age servers good so it's not completely cramped and people can't actually get into one server that's at or debuff has been reduced by 50 percent that's good because they said it was a minor debuff at first but it was like twice as strong as the buff you get when you get the rejuvenation buff and it was way too strong it was like minus 10 percent to like weight stam and health and like minus 20 percent to like health and stam regen so just ridiculous i'm glad that was reduced um so then we have some fixes fix a bug this whole stuff is good fix a bug which made it so beds and boat so that beds and boats would not display on the map if they were in the company fix a bug um with a joke which allowed to phase through structures fix a bug which allowed players to have more beds and boats than permitted this is a retro retroactive fix then we have the shitstorm of stuff in land changes Increase explosive damage to stone structures by 2.5 times. Why? I mean, I guess maybe the kegs. I mean, it depends what this is actually considering. I'm pretty sure this is probably only considering, like, kegs and grenades. Um, I mean, stone structures were pretty balanced. Most people thought stone rating stone structures was decently balanced. Maybe an explosive damage increase, if it was just those, wouldn't it be that big of a deal by itself because you have to run up and place them on buildings? So it wouldn't it be that big of a deal by itself just that increase to, if it's like only kegs and grenades that you have to go up to the building as a person to use? But then we have increased siege, siege structure damage to stone structures by 60%. So depending on what that's considered, I would assume that's also cannons and stuff like that. Maybe it's only boulders and stuff like that, but that's still just an incredibly massive increase to being able to raid bases. That wouldn't even be that big of a deal either, just those two separately. Woodland structure has been buffed to provide better resistance to siege weapons by 40%, so they're making wood better. None of that is... That's going to be okay, but none of that is going to make wood a tier anyone wants to use because you can still literally put oil jars on doors or hit door doors with tools and break them. A few people hitting a wood door with tools, you're going to break it in a couple minutes. So, cool. Woodland structures have been buffed to provide better defense against all non-explosive siege. So, that's siege damage types by 50%, making wood stronger. I don't think it's really going to make people want to use wood more. 
because it's still susceptible to like tools and fire arrows and stuff. But okay, that's fine. That's not really a big deal. Here is the just destruction that makes all this other stuff immensely overpowered. Stone structures crafting costs have been increased, adding a metal for some reason and changing fire requirement to organic paste, which requires both fiber and sap if you didn't know how to craft organic paste. So just to go over how expensive this is now, now a stone wall, so it takes the same amount of wood, the same amount of stone, and the same amount of thatch, but now it takes 20 organic paste and 32 metal. For whatever reason, like the amount, if you were comparing this to Ark, they're basically making stone structures, a stone wall in this game, like more expensive than a metal wall was in Ark. I do not, no one understands this change, because if you don't know why this is also a massive, like, just decrease, because for one, there's already an issue with being able to defend your boats, which making massive stone walls with defenses in them was the only way to defend them, really. I mean, if you don't have stone walls defending with NPC, automated NPC defenses also covering them, people can just get, swim up to your boat, hide on your boat, or in front of your boat so they can't be shot, then start destroying planks, get on it, whatever. It's much harder, and now stone structures are ridiculously expensive. But also, a lot of islands in the game, not all islands in the game, have metal nodes on them. Yes, you can get some amount of metal from normal stone, but not near enough to be able to build any amount of stone structures in any decent amount of time. Um... I think maybe, I don't know if any full grids don't have metal nodes, like direct metal nodes, but I know quite a bit of islands don't have direct metal nodes. And sap for paste, I know a lot of islands don't have paste, especially the colder areas. And I'm pretty sure there's grids, entire grids that don't actually have sap or sugar spawns to make organic paste. And some of the areas, like some temperate um some temperate islands some tropic islands have a bunch of metal nodes a ridiculous amount of sugar so they're gonna be completely fine they're like okay it's just a bit more expensive we still don't have to leave our island and other people have to move like two grids to go get paste or something like that i mean you can get metal pretty much everywhere at a reduced amount if you don't have nodes but the paste is ridiculous like I don't know the reason. I would be severely surprised. I don't know if that's the right phrasing. I'd be massively whatever surprised if they don't change this back. Every Reddit post has hundreds and hundreds of likes. Like like the top dozen. I stopped looking after like a dozen of the top Reddit posts on Play Atlas's Reddit are all talking about the same thing, that it needs to be changed. There's already people that I play with that are saying they're taking a break until this stuff is changed back because it's ridiculous that sh that structure has been reduced by three times okay i it's thatch npc mountain okay now this is another massive one past just the stupid stone structure change which is just ridiculous they also added organic paste to like the stone gateways and stuff which i guess you know like 300 plus alloy for a gateway and gate weren't enough you have to have like three four hundred paste or something with them now for some reason but now npc mounted on pokos are now invincible now this would be insane without any other changes with this stone structure change now there's it's gonna force people just to make literal small buildings with the stuff to feed and pay npcs and have their ammo on it and then just puckles everywhere they could possibly put them with npcs on them because now you'd have to destroy the puckle or the foundation and the, the npc is just 100 percent immune to damage until then i mean npcs were too squishy on weapons especially with how much they had to be paid and stuff but they literally just made auto turrets you have to pay now you have to pay and feed that's Feeding isn't them isn't too hard, the paying is harder, but they literally just made auto turrets you have to pay and feed that don't have a 360 degree turn that just has a cone in front of them. And that's what's going to be spammed around now. 
this isn't the way they should have handled NPCs being immune. They should have just, I don't know, make them have a damage reduction. Make them, make them no have have no headshot um, multiplier when on Puckles or something or all mounted weapons. I don't know why it was just Puckles too. Like there's a bunch of other weapons that don't make sense why they wouldn't have it. Um, and this really doesn't make up for this stone structure thing. People, Some people are literally going to have to go multiple grids away to make any stone building pieces. Any. Make one stone wall, they're going to have to go two grids. And this change also, I mean, this change is okay for defenses. I mean, I think defenses should be, it should be much easier to defend bases than it is to attack them. Specifically stone structure bases on land. But making NPCs on Puckles literally god and immune to damage isn't the right way to do it. This stone structure change definitely isn't the right way to do it. So I'm done talking about that. There's some decent changes past that as well. So basically what they did here is they made it so lower class. So they made everything a weight class, all the ships a weight class. And... A lower weight class can't ram and hurt a higher weight class. So basically, um, if you have a raft, which is weight class one, it can't run into a sloop and hurt it. A sloop can't run into galleons and destroy them anymore. But a galleon can run into anything and hurt it. A brig can run into anything but a galleon to hurt it. So basically, you have to hit stuff of your equivalent, equivalent level or below it. To be able to ram them and hurt them. Now I think this is a decent change. But it depends on how. Ramming affects both ships. So basically if you're ramming. It's not going. If you're on a schooner and you're ramming, ramming a brig. It's not going to hurt the brig. Will it hurt the schooner is the issue. Because if it hurts a schooner. Then that just makes ramming to be able to board. Not a viable thing anymore if they made it just if you rammed it and neither of them got hurt you could still do that to be able to board stuff um without that it's incredibly hard to pull up next to something to be able to board it really then we have drake balance adjustments 10 percent less hp 10 percent less damage a double stamina cost for using fire breath magical tames can no longer be used in boss fights and will be destroyed when using when used inside the dome drakes what are there's a dome for boss fights is it just some special bubble or something? I don't know. I actually haven't done any boss fights in this game yet. Um, and that's pretty much it. But I don't know why they did these changes, to be honest. Like, this one change right here is going to make more people quit playing this game if it's not reverted than anything else in the game so far. Than the server stuff, with the like, everything. Like, this is... This is stone structure pieces. The strongest we currently have. The only viable thing for making an actual defendable base. Because you can just fire arrow wood stuff down. Or oil, oil jar and fire arrow door. And it's pretty much gone for wood stuff. So it's the only viable thing for actual defenses. And they just made it super susceptible to like all other raiding types. And then they made it incredibly expensive. And I don't really understand why. Like, they said they want a defense to have an advantage over attackers, which should be the case. But now they're just making it so attackers are have a much, much easier time to raid bases on land. And it's much harder to make those bases on land. And if you guys don't know how this type of change affects these games, like how they affected Ark... This just makes massive tribes much stronger because they have a lot more space. They possibly have um, islands since they own, since like the top 10 um, companies own a bunch of different islands. They own more islands, so they probably own islands with those resources on them. So it makes them not have that big of a difference, but it makes smaller companies have a much bigger difference. They have a much harder time getting the other resources and a much harder time defending. So that's the end of the video. Subscribe if you want to see more Atlas content. Leave a like if you like the video. Leave a comment down below what you think about Atlas, what you think about these terrible changes, and thanks for watching.